Hi, I'm Kathy Johnson of Pyramid of Potential. This is video 30 out of 60 of the Harnessing Learning Potential video series. And today, we're talking about double vision. In video number eight, I talked about the overview of vision development, and I mentioned double vision a little bit. Today, we're going a little bit further into it. Double vision is not picked up by a regular optometrist. When you go to a regular optometrist, they will do things like check for your eye health and check for acuity, okay? And that's it. They're seeing whether or not you can see letters clearly. They aren't checking to see if you have some other significant issues. So today what I'm going to do is show you how I screen for double vision specifically. I have my Tom Sawyer story. So as you can see, this is, it looks like double vision. And so first I'm going to tell you how I made it and then I'll tell you how I used it. So um, I took a page protector and a Sharpie and I wrote the story and I drew the picture. I then um, took that page protector and made a copy onto white paper. I slipped the white paper into the page protector until everything lined up perfectly, but then I slid out that paper copy just a little bit so that it looked like vision or double vision and made this copy for you, okay, so that you can see what it looks like. So you can make your own simple process. Now here's the way I use it. Before I knew much, um, I asked the students, do you see this? Now, I'm talking to learning disabled students. These are the kids who are brilliant, they're smart, um, but they don't want people to know that there's something wrong. And so they know that if I say, do you see this? They know they're not supposed to. And so several of them would lie to me, okay? Um, and they'd get in the car and they'd say, Mom, I saw that. What's wrong with me? I don't want them to feel that there's something wrong with them. I want to find out how I can help them, okay? So um, I changed my language. And I now say, how often do you see this? The implication is that you do see this. And I just want to know how often. And now those brilliant kids um, who don't want anything wrong, um, they're a little leery and they're like, um, I don't see that. And they're a little worried maybe, okay? Well, fine. I've just moved them out and I said, that's great. You're not supposed to, let's move on. But then sometimes I get kids who'll say, well, hardly ever. And I say, so, like when? And recently a boy who had said that said, well, actually, never. I said, well, that's great, you're not supposed to, and we moved on. But now that leaves the people who do see this or something like it. We have no idea what other people see. I have no idea what it really looks like to them. So people will ask me, are they seeing quadruple vision? <laughs> Honestly, I don't know. All I know is this is not unfamiliar. So I say, how often do you see that? And they say, um, most of them say, uh, um, you know, several times a day. You know, it might be during reading, um, uh, at night when their eyes are tired, uh, during certain classes or whatever. And then there was the boy who uh, it happened um, Whenever he looked at the whiteboard, there was a boy who saw it all the time. There was a 50-year-old educator who said that she's never not seen double vision and that, uh, that that was how she lived life and she didn't even know that until she was out of high school and somebody asked her if, if that was an issue. I have one more story for you. So one time I was teaching a whole group of educators and uh, one teacher raised her hand and said that she had read every word in the story. And she had gotten to the end and, and said that she couldn't remember anything that she read and she's a very good reader. So she was very curious about that. And I told her that our brain only has a certain amount of capacity. And so if it's working so hard on just trying to interpret what each of the words are, that there's very little left over 
for comprehension and memory. So um, if somebody has a vision issue, if somebody is sounding out every few words, uh, if there's something going on in the room where their attention is being pulled away from their reading, any of these things can cause poor comprehension. When, if they removed all those issues, they actually would be able to remember and comprehend well. So it's an issue to be aware of. Feel free to make your own, uh, a story like this, and that's age appropriate for whoever you're testing, and use it that way so that you can find out what's going on and why are some people, even though they're really smart, having troubles with reading. And that's it for today.